Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Derek People, the Education Lead at Sporting Heritage, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to today's very special se session to celebrate the Art of Sporting Heritage Month with an equally special guest, the Olympic Picasso, Roel Bradstock. Roel, a very warm welcome. It's an absolute pleasure and privilege to have you with us. Um, I believe you're joining us from your home in Atlanta, so an extra special thank you for managing the time difference today. Um, our theme is art, the Olympics and multi-sports, and I genuinely can't think of anyone who's better placed to exemplify that connection. And I know it's something you feel very, very passionately about. So perhaps we could just start today by exploring the depth and detail behind that title, the Olympic Picasso. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um... Great to meet you, Derek, and uh, good morning. Well, actually, it's good afternoon to you. And it's uh, eight o'clock here in Atlanta, so I'm five hours behind you. Uh, but great to, great to be with you and, um, and talk about the uh, art and uh, sport and history and the Olympics. Um, so, anyway, so uh, uh, going back to your uh, question was really, you know, the first time um, I got kind of dubbed the Olympic Picasso, I guess, was really back in. Uh, it was in 2006, um, an article that picked up uh, in Athletics Weekly, and uh, I, very, I really was just in reference, uh, especially by Paul Dickinson, who works for the Port BBC, but basically it was in reference to um, my background as you know, not only an Olympic artist, but also an Olympic athlete, uh, which is kind of unique credentials. Um, like I said, I mean, that was in 2006, but, uh, you know, I was in the 84 and 88 Olympics for Great Britain. I was in North in 92, and then the North Net for the US um, team in 96. And then in 2000, I actually um, won the United States um, Olympic Committee's Sport Arts Competition uh, with a painting called Struggle for, per for Perfection. And, um, that actually went on then to be exhibited in Lausanne at the um, IOC, the Olympic Museum um, uh, in Lausanne, uh, as part of the um, cultural events leading up to the Sydney Games in 2000. So uh, that was my kind of you know uh, history as far as Olympic, uh, being Olympic athletes and then becoming Olympic artists. Yeah, quite absolutely unique. I mean, you 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 were also um, very modestly you were a world world record holder and continue to um, compete at masters level. But I think what you said there was was, was hugely fascinating because your your work um, uh, that that you actually produced uh, yourself, the struggle for perfection, I think was actually displayed, wasn't it? As you as you said there, um, in effect at what was um, a concept very, very similar to de Coubertin's initial vision for the Olympic Games, which was about the connection between artistic endeavour, creativity and physical activity. That was at the heart of the original vision. And we saw that, didn't we, then in, 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 in competitions? I think it was from 1912 through to 1948. But I know that's something you feel really passionate about, that we don't lose that connection. And indeed, we, we, we reconnect with it. Yeah. and, and uh... Again, going back to um, the, the competition I won for the US, which had been a US, US representative in 2000, um, it's kind of, again, they, they brought that back. The original idea, like you said, is between 2012 and, I mean, uh, 1912 and uh, 1948, um, of having like an arts component uh, to Olympics um, with the competition and basically competing um, within the arts. And uh, so, yeah, they, they brought that back. Uh, a lot of people don't, and I, including myself, um, I didn't know, it was around uh, 99, 2000, um, when I won that, the US Olympic Sport Arts Competition and then became a participant in, in the, the international exhibition. Um, I didn't know the, the history and the original you know, concept behind the Olympics. And, um, and that also uh, Pierre de Coubertin was actually um, you know, an artist himself. You know, he designed the Olympic rings. He actually won under the pseudonyms uh, the poetry competition in uh, 1912. Um, but again, the whole idea, uh, as I understand it, and, and you know, totally agree with um, 
you know, is just the, you know, we have these two, uh, I think everyone agrees that sport is a universal language everyone understands, but also art mm. is a universal, um, you know, language. Uh, and I think what's so unique and, you know, why de Coubertin was a visionary is he recognized, you know, kind of brought the two uh, universal languages together. And I think, you know, there's multiple reasons why it didn't quite work. And going, you know, one of the big ones was, you know, they, they, they didn't um, allow professional, you know, artists with professional athletes. And um, so, I mean, you know, the idea was, was bang on. I mean, he was totally right. Uh, but it didn't work, you know, the, the, it didn't work as, as, as well as, as, it, as it could have done. Um, so after the London Games in 48, they kind of did away with the, um, um, you know, the, the arts part of the, you know, uh, the Olympics as far as the, the, uh, the competition. Um, but, you know, half a century later, they started you know, coming back as far as the kind of mind, body and spirit and taking part and doing your best. and you know, athletes are not just, you know, not one-sided, they're not just athletes. You know, they, they have personal lives and other interests. And, and you know, to me, so I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. I mean, my goal, I mean, you talk to people, I've been over in the States now since, uh, you know, 81, where I was talking about wanting to be an Olympic artist back, you know, in the 70s, 80s, when, when I came, when I first came to the uh, US, not knowing, there was even such a thing or not knowing the history. It was just something, you know, um, I got my art degree and I just wanted to see if I could combine the two. And, um, you know, my destiny is I can, my life's journey has, has brought me full circle and just to, um, to be able to be um, still active and still you know, competing will be at a lower level. Um, but now be able to combine that with um, my art um, is is you know just amazing, just kind of um, you know I feel truly blessed and just lucky. And every day I can you know I can still continue to paint and I can you know still um, train and compete. Uh, I just feel very lucky. And I think you, you you sound you send such a really powerful message. I think particularly to young people there um, about the you know the, the the breadth of experience and sport being that. But that common language, but equally art. And I, I guess, you know, it, that form of expression has probably been never more significant than it has been over the, you know, the, the, the last 18 months or two years, as um, we all sort of seek to find a meaning, I guess, yeah. around um, the challenges that we confront. And I also know, I mean, uh, um, uh, your involvement in these sort of projects connecting go way back um we were we were even talking when i was a, a secondary head teacher about the projects that you were involved in promoting art can you just tell us a little bit more about the breadth of projects that you've been involved in um the art of the olympians for example and everything that you've taken through because you've been involved at ioc level haven't you in in promoting this connection yes yeah, so, i mean uh where it goes back first of all to um, when London got the bid uh, for the 2012 Olympics and Paralympics, um, the first thing I did uh, was spend about a year, 2006, 2005, um, in putting together a kind of multi-point, I was thinking about a six-point proposal um, that I then took to, uh, to LOCOG and spent about three and a half weeks you know, knocking on doors and, and basically cold calling um, to really kind of... Uh, um, push and, and promote you know, ways that uh, you know <clears throat> imagery could be used to to brand and promote the the sport art connection, and especially going back in in uh, you know history, um, and that really opened the door then to uh, you know youth sport trusts, uh, and I got appointed to in two thousand seven um, to uh, the sport art ambassador. You know, for the British government and, and we launched a, um, a sport art program throughout the uh, sports college network. I did uh, 27 um, uh, uh, workshops around the UK and each, each workshop uh, reached maybe uh, you know, five, five to seven, five, eight you know, different schools. Um, so a period over you know, a period between 2007 and 12, 
I did 27 workshops, reached about 100 schools. Um, and, you know, I think about 10, 10 to 12 uh, schools actually implemented some of what we did into their curriculum, which to me is you know, really exciting and kind of a great honor. Um, at the same time, I was uh, Al Erta, uh, four time consecutive yep. um, Olympian discus thrower, uh, and also abstract artist, uh, formed an organization, uh, international organization called Art of Olympians. So I, I joined that at the same time. Um, and then from that point on, uh, we had exhibitions with Art Olympians at the uh, let me see, 2006, 2008, and then 2012 Olympics. Um, and, you know, and I was still competing at this time. I, you know, so when I was I exhibiting these Olympic exhibitions, um, uh, you know, I, I, I was competing and actually, um, you know, starting to you know, blend the two uh, things, my two passions together, sport and art. And that's really where I turned the, um, you know, the Olympic, I mean, the, uh, the Javan runway into a fashion runway and started painting my outfits and started, you know, just really pushing, just, you know, the envelope and, and uh, um, you know, making up world records, just looking at the, you know, changing the way I looked at things as far as, you know, I throw a Javan, right? So, I mean, look at it, that's a stick. So if I'm throwing a stick, then what about just, I could throw anything and, you know, and looking at it as, you know, there's a, there's a skill, there's an art. To throwing and you know with that kind of mindset um then i started you know just kind of making up world records and kind of the irony is is that the um one of the things i've always done is is throwing golf balls uh, as far as my training for arm speed and it, it's apparently it's very unusual no one else does it that i know of and um but i actually submitted a record um and uh, followed all the guidelines to guinness and they denied my my application and uh, and so that's kind of always kind of irked me. Um, so it just kind of uh, basically inspired me to, um, you know, had enough, you know, official world records and, and national records. So I just started throwing various objects and kind of doing it tongue in cheek and just make it find the first person to throw something, um, whether it be a you know an iPhone or a um, vinyl record, um, then it'll be a world record, albeit unofficial. So I just started doing that and it just took off on YouTube and, and uh, I was on Channel 4, I think in 2009, um, you know, throwing all these various objects on, uh, on the airport runway and you know, changing outfits and just having, and having fun. And to me, it goes, that's the message I would say with, you know, to younger people, while, you know, I'm this aging, you know, decrepit, um, you know, uh, old has-been, if you will, just the... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm having fun and, and kind of, you know, rethinking, um, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing and just the, you know, the, my heydays as far as, you know, being, being on top and being competitive at the Olympic level are long gone, but that doesn't mean I can't still compete um, with, with people my age and just, uh, you know, and have fun with it. So, uh, I think what you yeah. just said is an absolute inspiration to, to those of, um, all ages there, Roland. I mean, I, 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 I've just got my, got some fascinating thoughts there about um, some of the physical activity challenges and the real creativity. And I think that's at the heart of what you're saying, isn't it? It is about creativity and it's about bringing, um, you know, the, the disciplines together and thinking in a mis multidisciplinary way that we're not one dimensional, um, whether we're, whether we're athletes or we're we're artists. And I think it's the power of that connectivity that you're making, which is such a key message. What yeah, and I think that um, back to your point, you said earlier, you know, uh, you know, the last two, no, two years, a, the pandemic's really, you know, taken over the planet and become like the number one story. And um, I think that's really, I mean, it's already happening in the sports world, but it's the, you know, the mental components and the kind of, you know, I look at, again, the way I see you know, sport is very different. Yeah, I look at it as, you know, basically athletes of, of, of performers, they're on stage, they're expressing themselves physically. And, you know, when you take that away and you're at a very, especially at a very high level and that's your entire life, then how do you, um, you know, how do you express yourself? And what I, I thought was very interesting, you know, as I watched the kind of YouTube videos of people, 
they're using their creativity to you know uh, in their training in their kind of you know in the way they're they're connecting with other people and fam you know, friends and family um, and I think that's where uh, you know something very important as far as the if you, if you take away if you exchange you know the word art and put in creativity I think you'll, you'll, you'll see the connection I think there's a this is kind of one of the reasons there's a disconnect between you know sport and art as far as the sports world and the art world is I think that the um, you know mention art to athletes whatever I mean they'll start running to the door so kind of like what is it's nothing to do with me it's just kind of and in the sport, in the art world, you mentioned stuff about sports, and it's kind of like the same thing. But I think if you look at it as, you know, you talk about creativity and you look at sports, and then, you know, it's very different. You mm -hmm. see how creative, you know, athletes are in, in developing new techniques, like, you know, Dick Fosby and the high jump. You know, in, in I mean, the obvious ones are, as far as like the artistic connection, like with, you know, uh, synchronized swimming or gymnastics, yeah. there's, there's music and stuff playing, blah, blah. And you know, and just kind of, but then you go on to you know, the especially now I've noticed in the last few years that, that when they introduce athletes, they 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 come out like on stage and it's all lights and they you know the, yeah. and their national anthem comes in and then you know, the same at you know, so that's the beginning and then at the end of the competition, the winners stand up on on stage, stand up on the podium and the flags come down which are you know design elements, they've got color, you're playing the national anthem, there's music. You know, you've got the medals, there's, there's design, you've got the uniforms. So you start looking at that way where it's just, you know, all this, this, you know, you know, art and, I mean, it's so intertwined, you know, that, uh, you know, I didn't, rec I couldn't see it. And um, so that's why I understand why other people can't really see how intertwined, you know, the two are. Your reflections there, I think, are amazing. You, you, you think about the, the theatre, you think about the fact that actually, the, the athletes that you described in terms of techniques, I guess they're iconoclasts in the same way that great artists are. They're pushing back boundaries. They're redefining what what's possible. They're getting people to look at the at, at the world differently. I, I, I guess, and that's that's just so massively powerful, isn't it? Um, do, what what what's next? I mean, have you have you got any immediate immediate projects that you're working on or or emphases? Well, one thing now is. In uh, 2000, uh, 2017, I got appointed to the IOC uh, for the uh, Olympic Culture and Heritage Commission. Um, so I'm now you know, a member of that. Uh, I'm also, the World Olympians Association formed a arts committee called Oli Arts, and I now chair that. Um, and we have other, um, you know, other Olympians, Olympian artists that are, that are on the, on the uh, committee, on the uh, commission. Um, and I'm also, you know, we just partnered with the uh, Peter Kubatan Family Association, uh, and also with the um, the new U.S. Olympic and Paralympic uh, Museum out in Colorado Springs, and really kind of, um, you know, I've been involved in the last two, um, um, the uh, sorry, the Peijong 2018 Winter Olympics in a, in the first ever Olympian Art um, Artists in Residence project. And program and then was actually invited for Tokyo to be part of the Olympic Gora um, project and uh, you know educational program um, and now they're having another another one um, well not part of this one in uh, uh, for Beijing it's all virtual of course because of the pandemic yeah um, but going forward now with with my my experience and with my kind of network and and my goal is to really uh, continue to uh, develop the existing platforms that are now in place with with the the IOC, so that at um, well the future Olympics uh, there will be winter and summer and youth. There will be you know some part of um, uh, you know Olympians and Paralympians involved in in programs during the games, but then also expanding that out to. Um, you know, in between the games. So, you know, we can reach, there's I think, 32 or 33 Olympian, um, Olympic museums worldwide in the museum network. Um, so really what we're doing right now is kind of putting the infrastructure to, you know, what I've done individually in my own career, and now it's expanded onto 
um, you know, doing projects during the Olympics to um, doing that year round um, all over the world and kind of really bringing back the idea about bringing back history, you know, um, Peter Coubertin's original vision, um, also Al, Al Erta's, I mean, about how to, uh, you know, bring together sport and arts and, and the athletes and the, uh, that experience as a, as a platform. Again, it's not necessary to promote sports or arts, but it's basically using that as a platform. Uh, that's, that's, you know, and our experience and our kind of, you know, the uh, stories of, of overcoming adversity and using that to really promote, you know, the, the Olympic movements and the Olympic values. And again, going back to being a well-rounded, um, you know, citizen and person, and, and that includes, you know, physical, but also mental health. I couldn't 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 agree more. I mean, I think it was really interesting there. You 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 know, you talk about the the Olympic, the Paralympic values as well. That was one of the great features, wasn't it, of the the London twenty twelve Get Set Education program as well. And I think for schools, um, the the real power there was you could think about your curriculum in a thematic way. It was about values. It wasn't about subject silos. It wasn't about art or sport or history. It, it was actually about how you can bring those disciplines together and to 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 get young people and indeed to get teachers to think creatively and we keep i think we're coming back to that creativity theme quite a lot yeah and i think what's great with it i mean i mean creativity we use in everything right i mean it's just how to solve problems you know not just in sport but in day-to-day -day life and it's just like you know but to me as that's where you know the carryover where it's not we're combining sport and art and kind of, but it's really about, um, again, substitute art for creativity and thinking, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a bigger, uh, in a bigger way um, that really applies to everyone, right? So it's a kind of, and really about, um, about how to, uh, you know, use creativity to overcome problems and challenges. And, and really also it's about, um, you know, finding your passion and kind of, you know, what is it that that uh, excites you and kind of want you want to go out and, and you know, put that time and energy into something that um, that gives you purpose, right? And and just kind of fulfills you as you know. And uh, so that's where again, I feel like it's you know the reason I'm I'm you know kind of a, the spokesperson ambassador for this these various projects because that's you know, I've been able to combine my two passions, and and to me, it's the you know, I thought I was all alone out there, and just this you know, um, oddity, just kind of I was, I was so original, just to kind of, and so and also so alone. Um, and so when you know, I came across the Art Olympians, was asked to join, you know, as one of the twelve founders, it was, you know, great to I just felt part of a, a um, the community. And there was, there was these other people, different countries, different ages, a kind of you know, different sports, but also had artistic leanings and just the, uh, um, and that's what, you know, to me, it's where kind of part of the, the my journey was realizing that, um, you know, there are these people out there, these, these, you know, creative Olympians and Paralympians and, you know, building that community and, and, and uh, building and creating, helping to build and create you know, platform and opportunities to me is, you know, that's why my legacy would be. Well, that 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 passion, that vision, and that legacy is is very clear. I just lastly, Raul, as we think about um, our art and sporting heritage month that we've got coming up, is it, it, are, is there any way that you feel very specifically we can be working to build that that sense of community, that sense of um identity that you've just referred to are there any particular activities that perhaps you'd like to see or anything that we might be thinking about ourselves creatively well i think it's i mean uh yes yeah, so we talked i've been talking about you know sport and art but i also think you know heritage you know the history you know sport and me is you know I, and you know, this may sound wrong in one place to say this but i've never liked history and it's, it's never been something that that you know appealed to me but but having said that, you know, and again, I'm getting older, as I said, closing on 60, is looking back, 
to me, it's kind of interesting seeing the pieces of what's what's you know now kind of coming together, you know, kind of being repackaged and just kind of um, you know to me is 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 actually it's actually interesting and kind of finding out stuff and um, so it's really kind of I mean to me it's the uh, like I said you know building the infrastructure um, but then you know, find the, the right partners so that we can start creating. So, you know, anything I do, I don't want it to be, you know, a single lane, if you will, like just about history or just about sport or just about art. To me, it's, you know, combining kind of, you know, the three together and repackaging it and kind of um, in really kind of like a new new program, right? So it's just kind of you know, something pretty much basically for everyone um, and something that, uh, you know, again, going back to my experience of, of history classes was something very about numbers. It was kind of, it was dry. It was just kind of, it was in the past. But I think, you know, the way, you know, you sport and art and talk about stuff going forward, you bring up the past, obviously, kind of reference it. But basically putting it together to me and package it, because I figure, again, one of the things, if, you know, if I had that experience, then other people did or do. So it's like how to, to, uh, to package, you know, activities and programs and exhibitions that, you know, the generation, you know, especially the younger generation will connect with. So to me, that, that, that really entails a, you know, a digital virtual component. And that's where, you know, to me, it's great, you know, um, having physical, you know, buildings and, but I've been pushing, you know, going back to Usport Trust, you know, the last, uh, the very last program I did back in 2011 was a virtual one I did from Atlanta, did it in, uh, dialed into uh, a classroom, a school in, in the UK. And my thing was about, you know, to really, you know, um, to reach a large audience. To me, it's the, uh, there's got to be a, a virtual component and, and that's the most efficient way to reach a lot of people. But it's also, Again, using my experience, where it's, you know seeing the kids, um, the children, you know them being excited, and Olympians, you know, um, calling in or looking at their artwork or the project, to me can have huge impacts. Where you're doing a project, right? And you imagine a whole, you know, dozens if not hundreds of Olympians leading workshops, you know, around and, and other projects, um, you know, diving into schools and kind of uh, you know talking for a few minutes about their experience. And you know, inspiring you know um, uh, pupils and students to to you know on their various projects. Um, you know, that, that's what I see is it's my kind of vision. And thank you for the creativity of that vision to uh, conclude the interview, Raul. That's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your your insights, your experience, and your creativity at, at every level. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Doug, for having me.